today's actions against Hamas include connections to Iran. We're going to continue to take actions to make sure that Hamas no longer has access to the financing it needs to pay its fighters and to destabilize the region and to take the actions that it's taken in Israel. Those are some pretty words coming from an administration that has done jack all, nada, niente, nothing, but embolden Iran. Mm -hmm. uh, today, the White House unveiled new sanctions targeting individuals and groups supporting Hamas with a special focus on Iran's role. But let's not uh, get too excited about this because the White House has let the terror sponsoring nation run buck wild. Can you say a little bit too late, Mr. Here, President? Here now, buck wild. Fox News contributor DeRoy Murdoch and editor-in-chief of the National Review, Rich Lowry. DeRoy, you wrote a long piece about this. Joe, Joe Biden, the Ayatollah's best friend forever. And it, the voice of that Treasury official kind of says it all. It's like, we're really going to get tough on <laughs> Iran. These sanctions are really going to remove the... Go ahead. The beatings with, with pillows will continue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people have been very concerned, as well as they should, about the $6 billion ransom payment that was given, uh, basically, uh, assets unfrozen that the Iranians be able to get access to. And everyone's upset about that. But what people don't understand or don't really know about in great detail is how much other money has been made available to the Iranians. Uh, you add up the uh, uh, softening of the sanctions on oil, ability to sell steel, ability to sell petrochemical products, uh, access to special drawing rights at the International Monetary Fund. You add it all up together, it's about $70, $71 billion. So it's not a $6 billion problem. It's really about a $77 billion problem, much worse than people think. And the best thing Joe Biden can do is just say right now, you know what? No money for you guys. It's all frozen. You can walk in any bank you want. You're not going to get anything. Ask him for a calendar because you're not, not going walk to walk out with any cash. So, uh, Rich, I would imagine that Joe Biden might say something like Droy just mentioned, but the actions matter. And I don't think mm -hmm. this administration is going to do anything to enforce sanctions against right. Iran. They've, they've been the appeasers of Iran. How do they address this crisis they've now created? Well, they don't, right? I mean, it's a joke. Two, two Iranian guys, that, that's their response. Two guys, and we're engaged in a charade where Iran has been waging war against us openly for decades, and then we pretend not to notice and do nothing about it. And they're, they're just two massive actions Biden took to just reverse things that Trump did that were working. One was the system that was in place at the border, it's created a disaster, and the other was the, these sanctions that really bit the hard currency reserves were heading to zero in Iran, and Biden comes in, and just because Trump did it, I guess, he reverses it. And also, progressives just have this obsession that we're going to get along with Iran, we're somehow going to work it all out. No, we're not. And the Hamas attack on October 7th was the most recent example of that. I, I just, I, I beat my head against the floor when I'm alone in my apartment. Well, with my dogs there. And, <laughs> I don't understand why you would try to make nice nice with a regime that funds terror and wants to wipe mm -hmm. Israel and America off the map. I don't, I don't understand Appeasement it. never works. No. Nope. All of, do you want to? No, you go ahead. Okay. All of this global conflict from the ongoing war in Ukraine to this war in Israel, terror here, there, and everywhere, it's got plenty of people fearful of a third world war, even Joe Rogan. It just scares the shit out of me because it's just like all it takes is one person to f launch a nuke and the world changes forever. Right. And I've never felt like that was a possibility in my lifetime until now. I mean, this is mu must have been what it felt like at the, the, at the beginning of World War III, or World War II, rather. But don't worry, Joe. Biden's State Department is looking out for Saul, leading the charge on world peace with top-notch uh, diplomacy, actually. Uh, we're just kidding. <laughs> like much of his administration, it's focused on social issues. Just yesterday, it issued a statement on Intersect Awareness Day. Intersex Awareness Day, I should say, as though that's a top priority right now as the world burns. Droy, this is, this is the problem, right? We're talking about Intersex Day, and you have two wars that America's funding. Um, we don't look strong in the world, and this is what you prioritize? No, it's unbelievable. I mean, they should get, maybe get the uh, Nobel Prize for tone deafness. Uh, you know, people are scared. Well, I'm having conversations with people all the time. Is this the start of World War III? Are we yeah. going to be glowing in the dark in a few days? And people are very, very serious about this. Uh, but uh, the State Department isn't when they're looking at this sort of thing. You know, they'll be focused totally on uh, how do we bring this to a peaceful end? How do we eliminate Hamas? How do we get our hostages back? And instead, we're talking about intersex awareness and all this touchy-feely, you know, sort of uh, faculty lounge kind of stuff. Yeah, do, do your job. If, if you're going to focus on intersex awareness day, Fine. After you get all the hostages back, you yeah, know, and the crisis right. ends, th that. then you can focus on intersex awareness day, and then you shouldn't be focusing on it 
at all. This is kind of a woke cultural imperialism where this administration thinks it's our job to spread this nonsense all around the world. And there are just many, many more important priorities, first among which keeping ourselves and our allies safe. But does it, Joe, this is, Joe, Joe Biden, I don't think, cares about this. But he's filled his administration with mm. people who do. So he hasn't got the, the best and the brightest people advising him. He's got people who check different boxes. I got different racial categories. I got different sex and sex preference, preferential categories. Yeah, he and has instead, no idea what it is, if you ask you want, you, you want people who are really smart because, uh, to, to, to Joe Rogan's point, this could devolve into World War III. Yeah. You need smart people to go, how do we contain this? How do you get the hostages back? How do we make sure uh, Israel can defeat Hamas? How do, you, how do you put a cap and a lid on it? But that's not, that's not what they're doing. Yeah, and you've got this guy, Matt Miller, saying that, that this, uh, intersex surgery is medically unnecessary surgery. Uh, these harmful practices, which can cause uh, lifelong negative physical and emotional consequences or a medical form of so-called conversion therapy. So they're basically saying that if you're intersex and your parents say, okay, let's make you either a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. don't do that surgery. But if you're a boy who wants to be a girl, then that's, that's called gender-affirming okay. <laughs> care. And that kind of surgery is all right. But everyone's going to consult the State Department spokesman on, yeah, on this right. decision, right? Because they're such great medical experts, after all. Yeah, focus on diplomacy and keeping this country and our allies safe. How about Jake, focus on that? What did Jake Sullivan say just a few literally days before the uh, October 7th attack? Yeah, that the, no, never been more orderly and peaceful. Yeah, never been better. Never, never better. <laughs> yeah, I know. And where is he on the power pit pyramid of adversity? Like, he just looks like a white guy to me. White straight guy. <laughs> Deroy, Deroy and Rich, thank you so much.